بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو سالر خان یو ٹیوب چینل وے ٹو ڈے وی اسٹارٹ دا نیو ٹاپک اینڈ دیٹ از آف سالڈ انسولیشن سو پریویسلی وی ہیو سین دا گیس انسولیشن اینڈ لیکوڈ انسولیشن ٹو ڈے وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دا فائنل کلاس آف انسولیشن اینڈ دیٹ ووڈ بی سالڈ انسولیشن نا واٹ از دا موسٹ کامن ایگزامپل آف اے سالڈ انسولیشن porcelain no for porcelain you have to go outside your home right the most common is pvc these cables around you running everywhere these wires they are all pvc insulated if you look around yourself in the electrical engineering world the most common the three major areas of solid insulation are cables machine windings and overhead transmission lines yes yes what is pvc so it is it stands for what polyvinyl chloride it is a polymer what are polymers it, these are long chain molecules we are not interested in any of this let's talk about the characteristic features or the properties that any solid must have for, so that it should be used as an insulation so number one is of course the high dielectric strength and the solids have got dielectric strength way higher than liquids and gases and what is that so it ranges from 1 megavolt per centimeter to a value of 10 megavolt per centimeter and even higher than this value okay yes but these are the intrinsic values which i'll tell you in the next video in the intrinsic breakdown but the thing is that these are intrinsic values and that means what that this is the upper limit of the breakdown value which is not achieved in practice in practice this much of an electric field or voltage does not occur on the insulation these are only attained under controlled laboratory conditions and you only do it for a test for a very short period of time just to know the maximum achievable limit in practice they do not occur on it you have a factor of safety and the factor of safety in this case is very very high so they are not achieved in practice they are only for testing of the insulation under controlled laboratory conditions you only have it for a very short interval If you compare it to the strength of gases so a gas has a dielectric strength of few kilovolt per centimeter to a maximum of 0.1 megavolt per centimeter no this is from a few kilovolt per centimeter to to 2.1 yes and then you have for liquids for liquids you have this dielectric strength to be 0.1 megavolt per centimeter to a maximum of 1 megavolt per centimeter so the dielectric strength of solids is the highest and it is used in very high voltage applications where solids where liquids and gases fail right yes the next over here it should have is a high mechanical strength now in liquids and gases we did not discuss about the mechanical strength but over here it is important why because if you talk about cables right let's say if you talk about cables so they have mechanical load on it they are buried under the ground or if you talk about this pvc cable so what do you have they uh, they they bend so somewhere you have compression somewhere uh, when they bend so some fibers are under compression some are under tension so you have a, you should have a, comp a, a compressive strength and a tensile strength so both are mechanical strengths so it should be mechanically strong similarly if you talk about machines rotating machines you've got vibrations over there and they should be strong enough to you know Uh, 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 sustain those vibrational stresses vibrational stresses are due to those vibrations which are in the form of, which are in the in a cyclic form depending on the frequency similarly in the static machine like a transformer the core laminations are vibrating you hear them in the form of uh, a noise right so the thing is that they should sustain those vibrational stresses similarly in the overhead uh, our transmission line they have to support the weight of the conductor as well and how much is the weight of the conductor so for instance if i am talking about a distribution system so if it is 
per meter the length is 0.5 kg and let's say the span is about you know 100 meters pole to pole distance 100 meters so the weight of the conductor is how much 50 kg so it has to support this and if you talk about the transmission system so let's suppose the ACSR conductor it has got a 1 kg length per meter and the span over there you talk about 400 500 meters so let's say it's a 500 meters so the weight of the conductor would be 500 kilograms the conductor has to support the insulator has to support this weight it should be mechanically strong enough right yes sir next you have is thermal stability number three it should be thermally stable so you have got I square R losses in the machines and everywhere. So those I square R losses are responsible for dielectric heating. What happens when the dielectric is heated? So it gets softened. It gets softened and the dielectric strength reduces, the, 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 the mechanical strength reduces. Its properties deteriorate. So what do you have is it should be thermally stable. Thermal instability of the insulation we will discuss in a great detail then you have what you have got a certain temperature classes over here what is a temperature class that, that uh, you know every temperature limit has got its own uh, uh, insulation you know which means that a particular insulation is used in a particular temperature region for example till 100 degree you have a separate insulation for till 150 you have another for example if you talk about a transformer so the maximum limit of a transformer is plus 65 similarly for for uh, for electrical machines the operating working temperature is plus 65 then of course you have cooling mechanisms but the thing is that uh, uh, in a certain temperature you have a certain class of insulators i will let you know then in the upcoming videos so it should be thermally stable then i talk about chemical stability so again this you know uh, chemical stability should not be just bound with the thermal stability uh, but the thing is that thermal, uh, thermal instability do cause chemical instability but it occurs with time as well anything you know any properties or anything you know it loses its properties with time you, you put you make a chemical solution you put it somewhere so it will lose its chemical properties after some time even a water bottle so there on the water bottle is also written to use uh, in a certain uh, time period so with time the properties deteriorates of course thermal instability or temperature causes this chemical stability also next is it should have a high melting point it should have a high melting point i will tell you that most of these are you know processed from melt or if not still if they are solid so what do you have it if uh, if the temperature is high enough they could melt so the thing is that it should have a high melting point so that it does not melt Similarly, when the temperature falls uh, below a certain value, you know, it goes to the negative. So what happens is that, that I will write over here is that it should have a low brittle point. The insulation or the solid gets brittle. What is brittle? You know, it, it, it sort of hardens or I could say freeze. So you have you are using a you have a transformer uh, so you have to use it in saudi arabia as well so it should have a high melting point insulation you are going to use it in siberia as well so minus 65 degrees so it should have a low brittle point so the thing is that the insulation should be operatable in the environmental temperatures that occur on the surface of earth plus 60 plus 65 to a minus 60 minus 65 then if i talk about the environmental factor so i would write over here is environmentally stable i would not write over here is environmental friendly why because uh, we are not doing anything with it we are not handling it in case of gases or liquids we have to do the handling so if you're using a pcb based oil that is very highly toxic but over here we don't have anything to do i would write it as environmentally stable it is exposed to different weather conditions you have rainfall you have hot summer days you've cold winter days you've got wind you've got ice loading uh, so the thing is it should be environmentally stable for example you check about your your wabda uh, uh, wire that coming from the transformer to your home 
so it has got a double insulation number one is the primary insulation the second is the pvc that is the sheath insulation the second insulation is called sheath the black so you know it is it is a very good insulation uh, uh, so if you see it has been working for about 20 30 years and nothing happens of course it will have a service life it will not be working forever but you you notice your warped the service wire that it has been working for quite a long time exposed to the environmental conditions but still working for quite a longer time next i can write one as as flexibility as a property if i write flexible so of course i'm not talking about porcelain i'm talking about the pvc based so flexible why because you have to bend them so if you bend them i talked about the compression and tensile strength over there so that it if you bend it so it should not have those micro cracks so it should be flexible enough, uh, you know, allow room for a little bit of a flexibility. Now, if I talk about, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of a classification of this. So uh, the thing is that you've understood this, that this is only the intrinsic strength. Okay. This is the intrinsic strength, which will not occur in the which will not occur in practice this is only under controlled laboratory conditions the factor of safety over here is very very high for example if you take you know uh, a cable or a wire so you take it the pvc insulated what is written over there it is written to 1000 volts 600 to 1000 volts but you're not using it you're using it only for 220 volts right the maximum your home appliances can sustain is a 240 volts so why are you using that cable with a 1000 volt specification so the thing is that the properties deteriorates with time time is a very important factor which we do not care about okay so anyways so if you talk about this intrinsic strength that this will not occur on the insulation so why do i have to care on, of it let it go no that is not the case time time will tell you about it the properties would degrade with time and these are a very long time taking processes 20 years 30 years 10 years maybe throughout the service life you do not face any problem well and good right yes physically what is the structure of 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 a solid or chemically so the thing is that they are strongly uh, bonds strong bonds and they've got a fixed shape they are tightly bound to form a lattice structure so they've got a fixed structure but i am not interested in this thing i am not interested over here in this thing i'm talking about the electrical world from my electrical perspective i will classify my solids let's say i characterize them first so the insulation if i characterize the solid insulation so one or number one that i have is my ceramic class and the second that i have is my polymer class now of course i will not be defining what a ceramic is what a polymer is fine yes in the ceramics i've got glass and i've got porcelain porcelain now these are high voltage insulators very high voltage insulators now the dielectric strength of glass is about 78 kilovolt per millimeter which is a very high value whereas for porcelain this range is from 50 to 65 i believe 55 to 60 55 to 60 55 to 60 kilovolt per millimeter so the glass has got a very high dielectric strength than the uh, uh, porcelain but why is it not used so initially it was used initially the glass was used for overhead line uh, insulators but the problem is uh, that it is mechanically weak so it can break right so they were abundant in the mid 60s and then porcelain insulators were used which are mechanically very strong but now uh, research and modifications have shown that they can increase the mechanical strength of the glass so if you can increase the mechanical strength of the glass the dielectric strength is already way higher so you use the glass insulators 
Fine? Yes. One other thing is that the, that the glass is made from, from silica, which is the most abundant material on earth. So, it is cheaply available and it is the most abundant material. So, economically that is also good for you, the glass insulator. Similarly, weight wise, porcelain has got a very high weight. So, porcelain has got a very high weight. So, it puts a lot of load on the structure. Nowadays, over here, the, 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 uh, uh, the porcelain insulators are used for 500 kV. The color is gray. This is a Canadian system. They are all imported. And you have for 132 kV system, you have got maroon insulators uh, are being used. Right? Yes, the color does not have any specific uh, reason, I would say. Glass is made from silica. And what is this porcelain made of? So we will discuss it while discussing the overhead line insulators. In silica also you've got in silicon optical grade. You've got grades. Silicon optical grade is that used for your solar cells right now. So we may discuss it when we are discussing the overhead line insulators. Now uh, in Japan, over here we do what we we take a string of, we take a multiple number of discs and we stack them to form a string but in japan you know they they form it from polymers let us discuss the polymers first in polymer you've got rubbers and you've got plastics so you've got plastics and you've got rubbers and the plastics the examples are of polyethylene so first is pvc right PVC polyvinyl chloride, then you have your polyethylene, then you have a low density polyethylene in this as well, you have a high density polyethylene as well, and then you have a cross linked polyethylene, cross linked polyethylene. Now this is one of the most repeated questions in the underground cables, the cross linked polyethylene is mostly used in the underground cables cross link polyethylene then in rubbers what do you have is you have let's say ethylene propylene rubber epr ethylene propylene rubber versatile vulcanized india rubber vir vulcanized india rubber right yes now they are used in uh, 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 overhead lines and not in the underground cables mostly because you know rodents attack them rodents attack them. One other thing is that the overhead lines that I was talking about, so in Japan you have a company by the name of NGK, so they used a long rod type polymer type insulator. They started using in the overhead transmission line, they started using a long rod type single insulator. We take a different multiple number of discs and we stack them together to form a string that is used, but they use a single rod type polymer type insulator and that was working, that was working, but you know then the problem arrived in Australia where you have uh, some regions where uh, there was a parrot family. You've got parrots over there and different kinds of birds. I believe it's called the Galas family or whatever it was. So the birds or parrots basically, you know, attacked those and they chewed it. So that was the problem due to which it was abundant. Now, if it is glass or it is porcelain, so they, the birds cannot chew it. So that is why they gave us the idea of using the long rod type insulators so i believe i will finish this video over here now the ceramics if i tell you are mostly used in transformer bushings they're used in overhead line insulators or many other things you know i would just it is used porcelain or glass is used let it go po polymers if i talk about it so the most of them are viscoelastic viscoelastic means what that they are you know processed from melt processed from molten state Processed from molten state was means what that they are you know solidified from a liquid state. For example, if you talk about rubber, so uh, rubber is uh, found in the trees in the form of a milky material, a liquid material called latex. Latex, and then you 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 process it, you fabricate it to give you their your solid form rubber. Now your tires, they've got different grades, right? So the tires are all rubber. The eraser that you use for rubbing the pencil writing, that is a rubber. And similarly, the insulating rubber is also a rubber. So what makes the difference? So that eraser, you cannot use it for as an insulator. Why? Because you've got your own grades. Each and every grade is different right so anyways i believe this is an end of introduction over here still if you have any question you may ask in the comment section 
from the next video we will start discussing the uh, the breakdown mechanism of this so i told you i've been telling you in the previous two cases as well that before the application of any insulation you need to know the breakdown mechanism of it so that is then uh, uh, you know an advantage you you understand it better so that the the basically the breakdown over here is quite a time mechanism situation it is widely distributed in terms of time in which number of first that comes is the intrinsic breakdown and the intrinsic i told you that this does not occur in practice have a look this is the time and this is the breakdown voltage so have a look the breakdown voltage is extremely high and the time taken is extremely low so the thing is that this does not occur in practice and this is only under laboratory condition the maximum limit over here fine then you have other processes are electromechanical breakdown then you have thermal instability then you have erosion so have a look it takes time but then the voltage could be very lower voltage but this time taken is also very high 20 years 30 years over here this is uh, uh, you know amounting for seconds or minutes range so that is it i will not waste any more of your time we'll see the breakdown mechanism from the next video till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye